are celebrating the 10th anniversary of Eat, Pray, Love, the bestseller changing lives all around the world, selling more than, are you ready for this, 10 million copies translated into over 30 languages and even becoming a feature film we saw with Julia Roberts in a new anthology of essays out now called Eat, Pray, Love, Made Me Do It. Fans are sharing how the book inspired them. The magnification of one life is indeed an act of worth in this world. Look for God like a man with his head on fire looks for water. Powerful, poetic words still resonating 10 years later. Eat, Pray, Love, a chronicle of author Elizabeth Gilbert's quest to find herself during her year-long travels through Italy, India, and Indonesia. It shows that at any point in your life, you can turn everything around. For Lisa Ann Valentine, turning her life around meant leaving behind the rigid sense of duty that led her to choose what she felt was a reasonable career path as a lawyer. In Latino culture, when you are the firstborn, you have a duty to be the responsible one. You make sure you get a solid education, you get a career, you stay on that track. This meant turning her back on her true passion, acting. I prayed every day to pass the bar exam. And so when I got these things that I so actively wanted, how do I then say, this does not look like me anymore? That's hard. But then she found the words of Elizabeth Gilbert. One must always be prepared for riotous and endless waves of transformation. For Lorna Strickwater, transformation came when she started listening to her own voice, just as Gilbert had done. The big change for me has been a journey of self-acceptance. You have to participate relentlessly in the manifestations of your own blessings. And as for Lisa Ann, she's now a full-time working actress. Elizabeth, it's because of your story that I kickstarted the courage to follow my own dreams. Thank you. And joining us now, the author of Eat, Pray, Love, Elizabeth Gilbert! <laughs> I do. I feel like this is the best birthday present of my entire life. Thank you so is much. Is it your birthday? No, it's the birthday of the book, <laughs> I know, though. I know, I know. She's That's 10. A, I know. That's right. <laughs> Can you believe it? Where do the years go? Oh, I'm telling you. And there's it's been, amazing. You know, a lot of people write books. And what, what do you think it was about yours, Elizabeth, that resonated with so many people? I've been trying to figure that out mm. for 10 years. And actually, this anthology helped me see. Because when I read the essays that people wrote, I saw this theme that showed up again and again. It's this moment in someone's life where they realize my life doesn't have to look like this anymore. And that's what Eat, Pray, Love was all about. It's not about the travel, the eating. You know, it's about yeah. my life doesn't have to look like this. Tomorrow doesn't have to look like today. We can make a change. We don't have to be stuck. That's what it's all about. And this was your journey. This was the journey yeah. that you took. Yeah. And we know we want to know about the Brazilian. Oh. <laughs> Is it still a happy ending? It is a happy ending to yes. a happy ending. He's such a great guy. Um, I just left him in bed this morning when I came to see all of you. Um, I always say the best way I can define why he's such a terrific person to be married to is this line of his. He said, a woman's place is in the kitchen, sitting in a chair with her feet up, drinking a glass of wine, watching her husband cook her dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that's the guy I found that's at the end of this journey. Saying. Exactly. That's yes. why I can tell you it's been a very happy 10 years. Uh oh, we're very happy <laughs> for you. you. And to see all these signs and, and how you transform so many that's lives. Great. And we want to get some questions now. Uh, Helen, where's Helen? Yes, right Okay. Here. All right. What's your question? <laughs> So um, after reading all of your books, especially Eat, Pray, Love, I just always felt the urge to listen to my heart. So I moved to New York um, trying to pursue the media job. But now I feel all these other urges to travel, teach yoga, like do things off the beaten path. So yeah. my question is, how do you navigate through all the dreams in your heart when they feel scattered? Mm. Um, look, we're scattered people, yeah. you know? I mean, there's a difference, I always say, between people who are jackhammers, who just find one passion from a very early age and commit to it, and they're loud and aggressive, and they just get that thing done. And then the rest of us are more like hummingbirds, and we cross-pollinate through the world, mm. right? We travel around, we try this, we try this, we try that. We live in a culture that rewards jackhammers, but the truth is that your life is this kind of scavenger hunt, 
and it's not finished yet. You are a project that has never been done before in this universe, right? You are an experiment of the universe, and it's ongoing. As long as you're still here, you're allowed to still be in search and to still be in wonder and to still be in movement. You don't have to say, just because this is what I wanted to do last year, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. Just keep going, keep looking. How do you do this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thoughts that come to you, the way you can talk to people, if you, it just always come naturally to you well, to express I, yourself so well? I've been talking my whole life. I've been in mm. rehearsal for this, my mother could tell you, <laughs> since practically birth. But I care about this stuff a yeah, lot, and do. there's nothing more interesting to me than the idea of somebody who is in becoming, mm. right? Which yeah. is what we always are. We're constantly in a state of becoming. There's nothing more interesting, and there's nothing more sacred. That's true. You know? I like That's that. That's what we're here for. Where is Smita? Okay. Hi. What's your question? <laughs> Our surfer. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. So um, because of Eat, Pray, Love, I found courage to travel alone, and I learned how to surf in Costa Rica, and I don't even swim. <laughs> <laughs> Is that even safe? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. And I was wondering, what was the defining moment when you knew it was time? It was time for you to quit your job now and just go and not look back. i got to tell you the truth. My life has not been created by defining moments, and I actually don't know very many people whose lives, if they're honest, are like that. I think we're always looking, it's almost dangerous, we're always looking for the defining moment, we're looking for the sign from God, the lightning strike, Moses coming down from the mountains with the thing, <laughs> and I think almost as long as you continue waiting for that, you might not actually be on the path of your life, because it's not about the lightning in the bottle moment, your life is a scavenger hunt, right? Mm. It's tiny little clues. Your, your gaze almost needs to be down here on the ground rather than up in the heavens looking for the big double rainbow. So I don't have one moment where I was like, I have to change my life. I had a four year period where I was so unhappy and I was in search and I followed my hunger, followed my curiosity and most of all, I just told the truth. Oh. And once you tell the truth, you're on the correct path. So, so it's okay if your life doesn't have these like cataclysmic lightning bolt moments. Um, it's a process, you know, not a, not an instant. I love scavenger hunt. I mean, when you when you put it like that, and, and let's throw out that word balance. We're always trying to say balance, and it's like, I mean, what is that? That is a word I would like to see eradicated <laughs> yeah. from the cultural conversation. I mean, you can't open a magazine today, right, without mm -hmm. somebody. The headline is always how so and so found balance. You know how this person found balance. Like, have you ever met that person first of all? And if you did, would you want to even be friends with them? Is that somebody who you would want to call in the middle of the night when you've lost your balance? Balance is something that you'd find and lose, regain mm -hmm. and lose. We're on a planet that's spinning 7,000 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Our minds are spinning 20,000 miles an hour. We're surrounded by people who are in change. We're in change. To expect that you should somehow be able to hold your state yeah. through that entire thing is just crazy. Yeah. Well, we're, you are a friend we'd love to call in the middle of the night. You're and you so said, sweet. you know, 10 years old, so we have a birthday cake for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you Everyone here, I know you already have her book. You're going to get the new book as well. Wow. The yes. Thank you. Yes, it is a celebration, and we thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. My Bless you. Great Bless pleasure you. to be here. Thank you all. And thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs>